Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Pros of Wisdom and Food with Keto Under 20 and clearly loud trucks on their way to work. I work in a neighborhood where I think every other house is a landscaper with a trailer and a big truck and, um, and then uh, another trailer for their bobcat <laughs> all day long. You'd think it was a major thoroughfare. I just got home from my walk and um, I have so many keto things going through my head. I watched uh, No Excuse Girl, Esther, and um, a wonderful woman that is doing the Maria Emmerich 30-day ketogenic cleanse. And so between Maria and Esther, you know, I, I could just dive into a vat of the foods that she prepared from, from the book. Um, and this particular book, is what Esther is doing, No Excuse Girl. And um, there's no dairy um, or something else. Definitely no dairy or cat. Oh, I remember she, she went without caffeine um, in another experiment, and she's willing to do these experiments. And then she showed all these blue apron quality uh, dishes that she prepared. And I'm, I'm laughing because I'm listening to the podcast that I uploaded for today and I'm talking about keeping it simple you know I have a salad with protein on it I have protein a veggie and a salad I have two eggs with a protein with some cheese on it <laughs> for lunch and I'm all about simplicity and she's all about being willing to try these exquisite recipes anyway I also came back from my walk with an incredible appreciation for all of you out there you don't know how you support me and buoy me and keep me on the straight and narrow wanting to continue to do this and not falling off of my tra train tracks um, with anything that could be tempting or triggering or because. You know, there's always a because. And I've been listening to this doctor lately and I won't identify him because I'm talking about somebody that interviewed him that follows a ketogenic food plan and say she was me and I was lucky enough to interview either him or Dr. Berg so you know it's not him or Abel James so you know it's not him or um, any other person in the keto f in the keto community that has initials after his name although Abel doesn't but he's an Ivy League grad, grad so he gets um, points in my book and turning it into my session me, me, me. This woman had this unbelievable doctor to interview, and she made the interview all about her. And, and she kept stepping over him. He'd be answering something, talking about what he does, his food plan, what he does with his patients, and so on and so forth. And she'd be like, but what about me? And so smack me. If I'm ever lucky enough to interview somebody um, famous who's published, who's got initials after their name, who is big in the keto community, and I want to turn it into a one-on-one, -on -one, smack me. You can do a Sarah Smackdown, except it's on me, not me to my community. It was like so annoying, and I'm 40 minutes into the 70 minutes. And now I'm just fascinated because she's just not giving it up. And here's, here's the kicker. I love this. And I see this in the jail, too, with the prisoners. They want to debate the uh, person that has either um, the badge on the gun or, or, in this case, the person that went to school for, what, 17, 18 years to become a doctor, to write a book, to have a community, a clinic, where these people are so successful where he has them do all kinds of educational things and learn things and she wants to debate him about what's not working in her life and he, this this particular thing just so you know was snacking now if you've if you've read dr fung's book or you've listened to him on tape or you've seen it in a podcast no snacking period ever period forever period, because, period, no snacking, period, or something to that effect. Snacking spikes your insulin. Snacking keeps you stalled from being in that keto 
fat burning mode that you want. Snacking is probably more of an emotional habit, 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 than a hunger need. And I wanted to interject between this woman that wanted to make it about her and the doctor that keeps saying, no snacking, you're not any different. Boo-hoo, you can't. I wanted to get in between the two of them and say, add a pat of butter to whatever meal it is that you're having. That was the whole idea about the Bulletproof Coffee, which I have in a very modified version at 3 a.m. And then I don't even eat until between 11 and 12, 11 a.m. and noon. So I'm I'm going nine hours after I wake up on just the Bulletproof Coffee. And all it has in it is either a tablespoon of Calapo coconut oil or um, pasture-raised butter and one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream that's organic. So it's not like the four or five hundred calorie um, cup of cup of fat, which would be delicious, but I'm not having that. So anyway, you know, if if you are an emotionally um, challenged person with your snacks and you really feel that there is a hunger there, then add more to your first meal and your second meal. I'm just saying. Now the doctor was saying it. The doctor has a right to say it. The doctor studied the science of all of this and understands the dangers of snacking. He includes so much educational um, treatment in his, in his field with what he does and the keto community. And so he knows. He's earned his chops, fatty ones at that. And so why not listen to him? Snacking is an emotional crutch. Remember I did the thing on crutch or tool, or maybe I haven't aired it yet, but it's crutch or tool. Is your snack a crutch or a tool? If, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like that diet that I used to see um, printed where it's like, you know, for breakfast you have, you know, a cup of Special K and a cup of skim milk and one cup of strawberries and black coffee, and then for lunch you have, you know, a, a an iceberg salad with hothouse tomatoes and two tablespoons of fat-free dressing. I, I, I'd be, I'd be eating somebody's arm or leg, whatever has the fattiest part to it by the end of the day. And then at dinner, it's, you know, the usual, it's like four ounces of fish and a half a cup of broccoli with no butter on it. And then it's a sleeve of Oreos and a pint of ice cream and a whole Hershey's bar. <laughs> that's, what, that's what snacking reminds me of. You're doing all of this work surrounding your keto way of eating. You're buying the keto foods. You're learning. If you're going to Sarah's school or listening to me long enough, you're reading labels. You're reading ingredients. You're not trusting American food um, manufacturers. You go to Canada or Australia or, or Britain to see um, podcasts or documentaries about sugar, about the keto lifestyle, because there they'll speak the truth. They don't in America. And if you want to keep believing it then, and buying the Kool-Aid, and um, with artificial sweeteners in it, go ahead. Your choice. Remember, when you, when you stick to a choice, you could be either stubborn, stuck on stupid, or just resistant to change. And if somebody with initials after their name is telling you that your problem with your weight loss is because you're snacking and you want to debate him when he's saying no snacking, I mean, if he listed his top five things about what to do or not to do when doing his food plan or the keto food plan, and, and you insert snacking because you're special, and you keep debating him on your interview with him, you sit back and let him have the mic, honey. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So if I'm lucky enough, if I get Dr. Berg for an interview, you don't think that I'm going to debate him. All the things that he says, like saying, "Well, Dr. Bird, I'm telling you, if I eat too many vegetables, I eat exactly here." And all of his podcasts are all about the same thing: the commitment a lot of us have here, be it a peer, 
you know, like the people that I listen to, that you listen to besides me, and then the specialists, we have a commitment and a devotion. Maybe we're boring to you. Maybe after being on keto for a week and a half, we're not doing keto recipes. Sorry about that. Not going to happen. I've already done that. Been there, done that, and my t-shirt is being printed. Tried it my way. Didn't work. Listened to the authorities. Doing it their way. Boring is better. Boring is safe. And it's not really boring. It's consistent. This doctor kept saying, you can keep doing what you're doing, but it's consistently wrong. And she said, well, why don't you tell me what the wrong things to do are? And he said, <laughs> like, snacking. <laughs> she didn't, she so didn't want to hear that. Um, so anyway, but then I won't get enough calories if I don't snack. Really? You know, when in doubt, add a pat of butter. When in doubt, add a tablespoon of coconut oil. If you don't think you're going to make it. And he said, hunger is, a, especially in the United States, probably Canada too, we, the marketers want you to believe that you're really, truly hungry. No, you're emotionally hungry. Their marketing works on you. So don't be buying it. The Kool-Aid is not good for you anyway. Whether you added, remember we used to add, what did we add, two cups of sugar to that? Something like that. And even if it comes artificially sweetened now, you know, if you, really, go listen to real doctors who spent all those years being real doctors as well as learning how to be a real doctor. Talk about what artificial sweeteners do to your body. It's not me. I'm not coming up with this. I'm just a parrot. Regurgitating. So, when a doctor says something and you feel like debating him, keep doing what you're doing. You know what I call that? S-O-S. -S, stuck on stupid. You know what Ron White says? You can't fix stupid. Nope. And you can't fix stubborn either. So, as long as you hold on to your old ways that didn't get you the body that you wanted, the sleep that you wanted, the skin that you wanted, the nails that you wanted, keep doing it. I mean, it's your choice. Another thing another doctor says is we have three choices. To change, to keep doing what we're doing, to not do anything and become a victim. And we all know victims. You can find a million new to keto websites where they're whining about how they can't do this, how it's too hard. Why do you think it's not going to be hard at first? If somebody plopped you down in a foreign country where they speak a language you don't even know what it is, much less how to speak it, don't you think it would be difficult? There's going to be difficulties. It's just how bad you want to do it. If keto under 20 doesn't work for you, try keto under 50 or 75 and wean down. Get rid of the sugars, get rid of the grains, get rid of the fruits. Try it that way. Don't even think about measuring your carbs or measuring your food or weighing your food or reading labels. Keep buying the crap just with no sugar, <clears throat> no grains, and no fruit. See how you do. It's giving up the sugars and the grains and the fruit that's a given with keto. Okay? It's the given. And then you build from there. It's the assumed. It's like me going to AA to give up drinking. It's assumed I'm not drinking. Okay? It's like giving up smoking. It's assumed you're not smoking while you're watching you're not smoking videotapes. <laughs> Podcasts. Okay? So the assumption, that's why I started with Dr. Davis's wheat belly diet and then moved on to his total health. Now he's got out the new book, Undoctored, okay, which is like veering off, but it's also very interesting and worthy of a read. But the assumption of going without wheat, if you don't know how dangerous the wheat is for your body, everybody's body, watch Dr. Dr. Davis's documentaries, podcasts, read his book, listen to it on tape, because that's where it's going to be explained to you the dangers of wheat to your body. And you're going to have to eliminate it on a keto 
under 20, under 50, under 75, however you look at it. It's the keat, it's the grains, all of them, and it's the sugars, all of them, it's the artificial sweeteners, all of them, and it's the fruits, except for berries in very limited, small quantities, and I wouldn't even recommend those until you are just hovering in your little maintenance world of between here and there and here and there. All right? I didn't mean for this to be a smackdown, but I just got so angry listening to this. Me, 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 me. I can't give up snacking. Well, okay. All right. What do you weigh now? You'll weigh it again in a month and another month and another month. Keep spiking your insulin. Between Dr. Davis with the no wheat, assumed, no sugars, assumed, no fruits and artificial sweeteners, which are add-ons, and Dr. Jason Fung with the intermittent fasting, which people on the keto under 20 naturally gravitate to. Right, Esther? That's what she just said. And I'm, and I'm here, here, in it. Um, between those two doctors, you're going to get the basics of what keto is. And then you can refine as much as you want. Or you can buy, you know, the, the fruits and veggies that are feedlot and GMO filled. You can do those things and still lose the weight. And you're not going to die. Okay? So, um, as this one particular doctor said to me, don't tell me you can't afford good food. Don't tell me that. You know, when was the last time you sat outside of a franchise and shoved in so much food and brought home half and made it look like the half was all you bought? Stop it. If you're, if you're buying franchise foods and swinging into Dunkies and swinging into Starbucks and doing all that kind of stuff, imagine your food budget if you stop those things and where you can buy your quality, nutritionally dense foods. Okay? So, Sarah Smackdown, done for the day. I see Greg. He's up. Um, so I must go. And you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. You can always message me if you're struggling with something. I am here for you. It's important for me. I am dedicated and devoted to Keto Under 20 and will help anybody that private messages me or does it in front of other people. Trust me, I am not in it for the bucks. Bye-bye for now.